Hey everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to be talking about one of the basic tenets of cinematography and that is the three-point lighting setup. So I'm going to be basically explaining uh, what it is, uh, how you can incorporate it in your, in your scene uh, to, your, to the benefit of your project, and uh, kind of throwing in some tips with iClone along the way in terms of lighting and shadows. Uh, so the main purpose of the three-point lighting setup is to get even distribution of light across the subject. Uh, you want to avoid deep shadows while also allowing your subject to pop out from the background. And keep in mind it's for lighting subjects, uh, not environments. Subjects are objects, not really environments. Now there's many different iterations, types of three-point lighting that people have, uh, you know, created. Uh, but basically all those uh, concepts are the same. Uh, whether, whether you're lighting a dramatic sequence in a, in a film or you're doing like a high school uh, photo shoot or something like that. Uh, but this is the project that we're going to be using. You can download this project for free as a freebie. And I'll provide the link in the description below for that. We have this serious looking fella here. So let's explore this project where there's four different cameras uh, right here and there's uh, four different lights. But the directional light right here, we're not going to worry about that. We're only going to worry about these three lights right here, which are the three point lights. So if you want to change your camera view, you can go up here, front, 45 degree, etc., etc. We're not going to worry about that. In fact, I'm just going to be using the preview camera for this entire tutorial because it's not going to record anything and we can move around freely. So if we want to get a face view of our character, we can just press the J hotkey. And that'll focus right on our character's face like this. Uh, we can also press the G hotkey, which will give us a direct overhead view, which is going to be very useful for what I have to explain next. So if we zoom out right here, here you can see there's our three lights uh, surrounding our character. And we're also going to make our front camera visible as well. So you can see that directly facing the character. And that's basically when we press the J hotkey, that's where our camera is going to be. Now, there's this uh, one camera, one uh, light right here, which is the key light. So this is the key light we're going to talk about first. This is at a 45 degree angle from the position of the camera and facing the character as well. Now, the key light, it's the main light in your setup. Uh, it's normally at a 45 degree angle from the camera setup, like I mentioned. And it's basically meant to add definition to facial features and the shoulders. Uh, it creates a dark shadow and gives a kind of a gritty feel uh, if only this light is on. So let's go ahead and press the J hotkey with our character selected. Let's turn off the rim light and the fill light right now. And you can see this is our key light by itself right here. Uh, you know, creating some harsh shadows, um, emphasizing the facial features. Now, one thing I wanted to mention as well is that these characters sort of have, uh, you know, eye reflections uh, on their eyes. Uh, especially the realistic human 100 characters. If we zoom in on the character's eyes, take a look at what happens if I activate our fill light. We get another specular reflection on the eyeball right there. And we can move those around. The key light, if I turn that off, that one disappears. We can move those around and I'll show that a little bit later. However, if I select my character and I select the materials and go to our character's eye mesh right here, there's an eye and a cornea. And these are basically just two layers of the same thing. Um, they all have a reflection map. So whether or not you want this is totally up to you. You can choose to have an increased reflection. You can see the result right there or take that completely out. I prefer to take it out because it's a little bit artificial in, in certain scenarios. So I tend to take that down and do the same thing for the eye as well right there. And you can also go down like with either of these selected. Uh, the cornea is normally the stronger one. Uh, go down here and you can also modify the specular highlight and you can see what happens when we do that, we can, you know, adjust the specular and the glossy to get these various results. So that's another way you can modify the reflections on your character's eyes. Just wanted to kind of bring that up in the middle of this key light explanation here. So let's select the key light again, press the J, or select our character, press the J hotkey, and then select our key light. Now, over here on the right hand side, we have three values which are very important to how your light appears. The multiplier value is essentially the strength of the light. Okay, so uh, let's actually take off our fill light right now. Um, the multiplier right here is uh, 1.1 and you can see our fill light is a little bit lower at 0 0.7 and I'll explain that in a little bit because the fill light is basically meant to just uh, you know, soften the shadows. We'll talk more about that in a moment. So if I take my multiplier up to like a value of 2 for example, we get a high contrast, a little bit too high. So let's take it back down to 1.1. And you can also change the color of your uh, of your light as well. If I want to have a warmer scene, for example, I can select this color swatch right here, and I can choose like a uh, yellowish color, uh, tan color. You can see the result right there. It looks a bit warmer. 
Um, or we can just go to like something like a uh, almost a more of a pink uh, tone right there, skin tone. And get a nice warm skin tone right there. And we can also do something if we wanted like a colder. Uh, it's basically like he's in front of a fireplace or something right here. And if we wanted him to be like on a cold winter day looking out a cold window, we can go and select a cold color, like a really light blue or something like that. And you can see the result right there. So those are, you know, basic ways you can set the tone of your lighting just by selecting the color swatch and changing that slightly. Let's control Z a couple times here. And there's also the intensity as well. We'll talk more about the intensity uh, as we get into the fill light. But basically the intensity is another way to kind of, uh, you know, soften in this little area right here, you can really soften your light and strengthen it. But we're just going to keep this intensity quite high. Uh, so there's the fill light. That's a ba or rather the key light. That's a basic explanation of the key light, what it's used for. And uh, like I mentioned, creates, creates dark shadows, gives a gritty feel. Um, and it's used to add definition to facial features and the shoulders. So let's bring on our fill light now. So let's move to the fill light. And I'm going to select open my fill light right here. And you can see that we have the shadows get a lot softer. Now they don't disappear because that's not what we want to do. We want the shadows to just soften up a little bit uh, on the uh, left hand side of our character's face there. And the fill light is normally placed at a 45 degree angle from the camera on the opposite end of the key light. So it's this, in, the, in this example the fill light is on the right hand side. Uh, now it's not supposed to compete with the key light, it's supposed to complement it. And normally it's a little bit further away as well. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to have all my lights look at my character. Because we're focusing on our character's face right now, um, it's an easy way to uh, have our lights focus on the character while we're still able to move them around, is to have them to look at the character. So I'm going to select my key light, for example, and I'm going to select uh, and look at over here, select pick target and pick my character's face. It'll be slightly different. We can also pick the target and pick like the neck, for example, and it'll be focused further down. But I'm going to just focus on the head, okay? And let's do the same thing with the fill light. So fill light, we'll just pick target and pick our character's head. Slightly different, not that much of a difference. And the rim light, which we'll get to later, we'll pick target and pick the character's head as well. Now, what I'm going to talk about here is basically when we select the fill light, now we can talk about the range. So the fill light is a lot further away. If I have my character selected, press the G hotkey again. Make sure we select the character, press the G hotkey there. Let's make that uh, front camera invisible for now. The fill light is right here. It's a lot further away from our character. The multiplier is lower and the range is lower. And the color is more of a light gray. So it's just meant to kind of fill in the shadows, almost like a light shadow color itself. So say for example, I uh, let's press the character now and press the J hotkey. If I only have the fill light on by itself, you can see the result right here. We get that nice, you know, uh, eye reflection. Uh, it's, you know, almost like an artistic type look. Let's actually make these lights invisible for now. We don't want to see them anymore. Um, and you can see the result right here. We get this nice, really super soft lighting, um, almost a mysterious type of vibe to it. Now I can take this uh, fill light and I can modify the position of it. Now let's zoom back and take a look at the fill light itself uh, right here. I'm going to press the W hotkey and you can see we have a red R axis, a green Y axis, and a blue Z axis. Now that's important to keep in mind because when you change these values right here, you're going to modify these ones over here in the transform section. So I'm going along the X axis right there, going along the Y axis, and you can see the results right there. Now, if I, let's press Control Z and bring it back to the original position. Let's go back to select our character. So the, uh, if we select the fill light right here, basically the positions that we're changing right here are the same positions as the ground of our character. So if we want to go further to our character's left, we need a positive X value. If we want to go further behind our character, we need a more positive Y value. If we want the, the, the light to move up and down, we want a higher or lower Z value, okay? So let's just keep that in mind. I'm going to select my character, press J again, and use the fill right here. So if I want it to be higher up, take a look at the reflection in his eyes when I change this Z value to something like 300. It'll go higher up, and the fill will be higher up on our character as well. We get sort of a totally different effect, actually. I'll change that back to, I think it was, was about 150 
right there. And the y axis, if we take that from negative 200 to positive 200, for example, it'll actually go behind our character, which we don't want. So we'll press control Z and undo that. And the X, if we press, let me change that to like something like 500, for example, that'll be way over on the right hand side there. Uh, let's change that back to this value. So it's almost directly at a 45 degree angle there. Okay, so that's how you can, you know, move your uh, lights around just by using these values right here. Um, now, in addition to that, the range uh, has a very strong effect on the shadow as well. So let's bring the key light in back in one more time. And let's select our fill light and increase the range. So you can see this is a really subtle way to increase or decrease the level of shadow that your fill light is taking up, that it's softening. Okay, so that range is probably the best for getting very subtle uh, shadow uh, touches here. And I'll just keep that at about uh, 800 or something like that. Again, the more dramatic you want it, the lower the value you can have. All right, so that's that. Let's talk now about the backlight or the rim light, or some people call it the hair light. It really depends on the lingo you're using. But let's go ahead and activate that one. You can see that's the, basically doing what it's supposed to. It's supposed to pop the character out from the background. Um, you know, create sort of a rim along the edge of the head and the shoulders to pop it out from the background. If we don't have that, notice it kind of just blends into that, that dark background a little bit more and the character's not popping out as much. So we want to activate that rim light to get that effect right there. Now, if we take our uh, fill light and our key light and take those off, we have a very you know harsh looking light um, that's just from the single, uh, from the side right here. And if we uh, show that light, actually, let's show that light. We zoom out. Uh, where is it? Oh, that's the key light I activated, not the rim light. There we go. We can move this around like this. And if we wanted to have sort of a, you know, creepy vibe like this, we can move it a little bit forward on the Y axis and we get that uh, really strong shadow effect on the uh, character's head right here. So um, now with the rim light selected, uh, if I change this Y value to something like 30, it'll be behind the character, negative 30, It'll be right in front of the character. We get that really strong, um, you know, shadow effect coming down on our character right here. Now let's go ahead and add some care. Uh, this will be, you know, something for like uh, uh, maybe sort of ghost uh, type scenario. You might use this kind of harsh lighting from directly above. But let's go ahead and add some hair onto this character. Let's go to the content tab under body part CC hair. You can find this short hair. Everyone has it. Uh, it comes for free. Let's just select our character there. There we go. And now you can see the hair actually casts a shadow on our character's face. Let's press the J hotkey to get a focus here. And I'm going to take that rim light and maybe bring it a little bit further up as well. Maybe negative 45 or negative 40 should be okay. There we go. Just so we can see a bit more of his eyes. So this is a really, you know, creepy type of look right here. But we still get the, the, the shadows casting from the hair, which is pretty cool. Now here's where we're going to talk about shadows. So to, to take a look at shadows, I'm going to go to my content tab here, uh, rather no visuals, and there's a shadow tab up here. And there's a whole bunch of values that you can modify here. Opacity is one that darkens the shadows or lightens the shadows. So normally I like to keep, especially in a dramatic sequence like this, I like to keep my opacity super high. You know, almost 100% should be fine. Um, bias is something that you can use if you're getting sort of like sort of issues or iterations that are not correct with your shadows, normally you can take your bias to like a negative five or negative 10, but I think we can take it to zero in this case. So there's absolutely no, no problems with the bias. We won't have much of a difference. And we can also take our soft shadow from performance right here to quality. And you can see it softens it up quite nicely, depending on which value we have one, two, or three. So that's another way to uh, you know change your shadows. And in addition, the shadow resolution, of course. So if I change it to 512, not very good, not very realistic. Whereas 496, we'll get some very harsh, very realistic shadows on our character's face. Um, you know, I like 496. If, 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 if it's only one character in your screen, there's not very much going on. Because um, this is pretty, it can be resource heavy, depending on how many shadows you have in your scene. Uh, we can also take that you know, rim light and uh, move it slightly to the side as well. Let's move it maybe to a uh, value of 20 on the x-axis, something like that. And we get this really uh, dramatic look with this character. 
Now, aside from the three-point lighting setup, you can also modify your scene lighting with ambient lighting. And I'll show you how to do that right now. We'll go over here to the visual tab right now. And uh, where the, the same uh, tab where the shadows are, you can go over here to the atmosphere. And in atmosphere, you have a swatch up here for ambient light. Now, you can change this right now. If I go down and I change it to like a darker black color, for example, take a look at the ambient lighting in the scene. It gets a little bit darker. That's a very slight change. We can press Control-Z to undo that and go back to our original color. And then we can go select the swatch one more time. Maybe change it to like a really dark kind of red, uh, something like a, more of a red tone instead of the blue tone we had before. And you can see that very slight change. Now this is global ambient light setting, so keep that in mind. It's going to affect everything in your scene. If there's other characters in the scene, it'll also affect those. If you wanted to have like a colder, uh, you know, ambient light, we can do so as well. And that'll light up the uh, entire uh, scene like this. Ambient light, you can use it in certain situations, you know, just to get that extra little touch on the shadows. Now, in addition to the global ambient light, you have ambient light uh, swatches for individual items as well. So if we select our character and go to our materials over here, notice that if we select something like our characters, uh, let's go up here to uh, the skin and head. So this is, we're selecting the character's skin on the head right now. If we go down here under material settings, there's a diffuse color, an ambient color, and a specular color. Now the ambient color is exactly the same thing as the ambient light. However, it'll only affect this material map. So if we go to ambient color on the uh, uh, face, face right here, if we go to a dark red, notice that when we change that, the face will get redder, but the body will remain pretty white. So if I press Control Z and undo that, you'll be able to notice a very slight difference right there. Okay, so maybe that may be a little bit too subtle. Let's try something a bit more uh, vivid here like this. Uh, there you go. Okay, so you can see, uh, obviously, you normally wouldn't want to do that probably, but you can see the ambient light only affecting the character's face. Now, aside from that as well, in addition to the ambient light settings, I prefer to use image-based lighting. So if you go down here, you can select IBL, image-based lighting. You can turn that on and you can adjust the strength. There's a default one that comes with uh, IBL, this one right here, and you can adjust the softness and everything like that. Um, if you double click on that swatch, you can choose something like this uh, this night scene right here. Uh, if I just preview this really quick, you can see it's just like an out of focus uh, night scene, like city night scene. So if I select that, we're gonna get some really interesting lighting. Um, and I can increase the strength of this and decrease the strength and get the kind of an interesting result. So if, if we have uh, you know, a scenario where he's at the in the city at nighttime, this would, might be an interesting uh, approach to take in addition to your three-point lighting. So you can add that um, ambient light uh, in addition to your three-point lighting to get the desired effect. So something like this would be uh, really cool, I think, for a, a scene at night. And then if we want, we can go ahead and switch the character as well. So if we went to, like, you know, the content tab, back to our uh, male heads, let's choose uh, this Asian character, for example. We click and drag this guy on here. You can just swap out the heads just like that by, uh, you know, clicking and dragging the RL head. And like I mentioned, you get all sorts of cool ethnicities like this guy, and you can uh, animate him as well. Uh, face puppet. Let's do the face puppet again. An angry face puppet. And, you know, different characters have different features. Let's uh, click and drag in this dude right here. One more ethnicity to go, and then we'll uh, end this tutorial. Um, so like, like I mentioned, guys, you can combine these three different lights in various ways. Uh, let's get rid of this guy's hair. It looks a little bit odd with the hair there. <laughs> um, you can combine the uh, three different uh, lights in different ways, the fill light, the key light, and the uh, rim or the hair light. And in addition to that, you know, um, modifying those that light scenario by adding in some ambient light as well. And you get a really cool, interesting result like this with very realistic facial textures on our characters. So again, thanks so much for watching everyone. Hopefully you learned a lot here and uh, make sure you check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com and I will see you in the next tutorial.